Dr. Tanya Reamer Altman is a pediatrician and on the editorial board of the American Academy of Pediatrics. She also happens to be the mother of two with a new book called Mommy Calls. Dr. Tanya answers parents' top 101 questions about babies and toddlers. Dr. Tanya, good morning. Thank you, Amy. So good morning. So what does a parent need to know before he or she calls the doctor? Well, when you call the doctor, in addition to discussing the symptoms, it's also helpful to know how long has this been going on. Is it worse at night? Is it keeping your child up? Is it really serious? Is it interfering with their feeding, their playing, and their sleeping? Should you ever hesitate? Because I have, definitely have. Am I being a crazy person? Should I call the doctor? And especially when something's happening, as it always does, in the middle of the night. If you think something is important and you need to speak with your pediatrician, you should never hesitate to call. As a parent, you really know your child best, so if you think something is wrong, if something's concerning you, pick up the phone and call, even if it's 3 o'clock in the morning. Colds are the most common cause of wheezing in young children, and after several such episodes, your doctor may say, well, your child has asthma. And whenever your child is wheezing, you do need to see your doctor. Now, nebulizers are used to help deliver medication into the small airways of the lungs, and this is the area that gets narrowed and inflamed when your child gets a cold. And the nebulizer medication can be used to help your child breathe easier or to help prevent future episodes of wheezing when they get future colds, which we know they will every couple weeks But the weeks nebulizer the itself is a safe treatment. It is, and it's a great way to deliver, to deliver medication when your child needs it. What do you do if your toddler wakes up every night and then wants to come into the bed? Sleep questions are very common. <laughs> if your kids aren't sleeping, then you aren't either. So it's important to develop a good sleep routine early on from day one. So with toddlers, what you want to do is tell them that starting tomorrow night, you're a big boy and you are going to sleep all night long in your own big bed. Big boy bed. Buy them a special new comfort item like a pillow or a stuffed animal and Ooh. choose a night like a Friday night where it's okay if you don't sleep for a few nights. Right. And when they get out of the bed, march them straight back in. Every time, the first time you can say, tonight we sleep all night long in our big boy bed. Right. The second time, say bed. And after that, don't talk to them. Don't look at them. And Just they're going to cry. Back to they're going to they're gonna cry. They may cry. They may scream. Yeah. But if you're consistent, it will only take two or three nights in a row. Oh. I like both of Kiana's resolutions because too many kids aren't getting the recommended 10 to 12 hours of sleep a night they need, which is essential for proper growth and development. 10 to 12 hours and is development. Wow. key for kids. Exactly. And Kiana's also at an age where she can start learning how to make healthy food choices. So something that you can do to help Kiana keep her resolution is to challenge her to eat three colors of the rainbow a day of fruits and vegetables. Let her choose healthy foods of each color such as apples, carrots, bananas, what do we have, broccoli, blueberries, and grapes. And have fun with it. Make a sticker chart for the kitchen. What are the medicines that have been recalled? Basically, cold and cough medications for infants under age two have been recalled. And products labeled for children age two through six are currently being investigated. Now, it's important for parents to note that fever reduction medications such as acetaminophen and Tylenol are safe when given appropriately, but the combination medications such as those that include the fever reduction and the cough and cold ingredients have been recalled. Tanya Altman is the editor of the American Academy of Pediatrics book on child development, The Wonder Years. Dr. Altman, good morning to you. Pretty controversial topic here, this notion that you can train an infant to use the potty. They call it um, elimination communication, and the people who do it swear by it. Do you think it works? Well, for some families, it can work. It is a commitment, though, and my concern is that for some already overly exhausted new parents, such as myself, this may be one extra responsibility that might push them over the edge. But do, do parents, I mean, do babies have an instinctive ability to let a parent know, to signal to a parent when they want to go to the bathroom when they need to go to the bathroom? Well, babies do communicate. They laugh, they smile. So parents who practice elimination communication, they study their infant's language. And when their baby makes that face, like the one where they're about to start pushing, they will take and rush them to the potty. Or they'll notice a predictable pattern, such as after a nap or after a feed. So really, it's the parent that's being trained to recognize their infant's signals. So if the poop gets in the potty, give mom the gold star. Or what could be some of the causes that, the, the, for a baby this young to have seizures? Well, when I see a seven-month-old with seizures, there are many things I'm looking for. Is there a fever? Could this be a sign of a serious infection such as meningitis or something simple like a febrile seizure? In addition, there could be an underlying brain damage, or sorry, um, brain issue or other abnormality in the baby's system causing the seizure. And one thing that we always have to be on the lookout is could this be child abuse, Munchausen by proxy, or an ingestion, whether accidental or intentional, causing the seizure in the baby. And usually by 
by taking a history, if there was someone who witnessed the seizure that can describe it to you, and doing some examination and tests on the baby, we can hopefully determine the cause of the seizure.